Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in. In this video I'm going to be looking at the concept and meaning of gallon, not as a word, but as a unit of measure. The question on the board is providing a little bit of context around the topic. The question is a little bit misleading because it's not specific enough. How much does a gallon of milk cost where? Down at the corner store? In Madagascar? It does make a difference in what market this question is asked. Also, what kind of milk? Walrus milk? cow milk, goat milk, it does matter what kind of milk is being sold. There are more than one kinds of milk. Likewise, there's more than one kind of gallon. Let's have a look at that. The two types of gallons that are in commercial use are called Imperial Gallon and US Gallon. I didn't come up with these names, this is what they are called. Imperial Gallon harks back to an era of the British Empire and that's what we're going to talk about a little bit and the US Gallon uh, is, uh, is also at around the same age. So for the subsequent notes here on the board Imperial Gallon notes will be in blue and US Gallon notes will be in red. Let's start with the US Gallon. The US Gallon uh, started out as wine gallon originally. For different commodities, different gallons existed in the late medieval, early modern period. So in the late 1600s, early 1700s, wine gallon for wine, ale gallon for beer, corn gallon for dry goods were in use and in different localities, different local variations of these gallons also existed. So the Irish corn gallon wasn't the same as the English corn gallon, was different from the Welsh or the Scottish or the French or whatever else. So they started standardizing stuff because this was madness on an exponential scale, converting everything just because you move a hundred miles or just because you move goods or commodities from one country to another, multiple conversions were needed. It was madness. So they said, let's try to tone it down and make it simpler. How about we just have one kind of wine gallon? And that was progress at the time. So they took the wine gallon, which had a volume of that they chose and they, to, be, to, to have it fixed, 231 cubic inches, and they standardized that, and uh, <coughs> Queen's and uh, uh, Order number 5 made this wine gallon into the official gallon of, uh, not the British Empire, but something like that. All colonies, it wasn't called an empire in 1706. And everybody just had wine, instead of wine gallon, it was called the gallon. But because the Americans separated from the British Empire later on. Uh, this gallon just got renamed the US Gallon. So, it used to be Wine Gallon and it just was called Gallon and then it was called US Gallon. That's what it's called today. 231 cubic inches is its volume. In my hand, of course, here is a cubic inch. This is a chunk of aluminum or aluminium, depending on what market you are in. It has a length of one inch, a height of one inch, and a width of one inch, whatever. It's uh, one inch of space. It doesn't really matter what it's made of. It can be made of ice, it can be made of milk, whatever. Space is space, so just consider it as space. It doesn't matter what it's made of. 231 of these little guys make one US gallon. Because the volume is, is fixed to this many cubic inches, when this much space is filled with water, that is pure distilled water, at sea level, at normal standard temperature and pressure, say latitude 45 in normal gravitational pool, not on the moon or whatever, not at the equator either, not at Santa's workshop on the North Pole or not on the South Pole either, so just normal gravitational pull. So it works out to be about 8.33 pounds. And because of these variations that I mentioned, uh, this 8.33 pounds does vary. 
hence scales in commercial use need to be all standardized or uh, uh, authenticated by uh, local authorities that it actually measures correctly but that's a story about scales so what I have here is a scale that works like this it's a digital one and it shows zero on its display if I can come a little closer oh, it's okay there it's kinda there you can see it's there's no weight on it there's just the chunk of rope and if I just move it ever so slightly so it's finicky okay let's zero it down again there now it's zero what I have here is one US gallon here it says 7 point sorry 3.7 liters on it you know on its corner and if I hang it on the scale with this highly sophisticated rope and hook assembly then this is how it's gonna look like if I bring it closer to the camera it's 8.3 pounds because that arrow there is indicating that the device is measuring in pounds now of course 8.3 is what I filled it with water it's not distilled water and I had to pour out a little bit to compensate for the weight of the container so I made it 8.3 pounds but uh, you get the idea this is 200 space to contain 231 cubic inches if it's filled with gasoline it's lighter than water if it's filled with molten aluminum okay it's gonna melt because it's plastic but you get the idea it's gonna be a lot heavier than than water so that's US gallon and that's uh, basically what goes into it the Imperial gallon has a slightly different story after the American uh, wars of independence the British Empire updated its 1706 Queen Anne's wine gallon was the gallon and they updated the gallon which update the Americans did not follow. In 1824 the British created the imperial system of measures and in this system the gallon was not defined based on number of cubic inches but was defined completely differently. It was defined as the space so it's still a container it's a different container and it works out to be 4.4 liters there so it's a bigger container 10 pounds of pure or distilled water at 62 degrees Fahrenheit so the water and the air are both at 62 degrees Fahrenheit at 30 inches of mercury of barometric air pressure so it's at about sea level and of course it's also measured in normal gravitational pull at around 45th latitude or so because this is how they defined the gallon it's based on weight it has a fixed weight and other conditions that surround it a little bit of detail on this 30 inches of mercury you might know it as 760 millimeters of mercury or 76 centimeters of mercury or 101.3 kilopascals either which way it is a barometric pressure I'm not going to go more detail into it why but later later than 1824 the standard barometric pressure at sea level was reset or recalibrated or remeasured and the better number was created it's 29.92 the more accurate number of standard barometric pressure at sea level averaging out on the whole earth so but at the time 1824 they didn't know 30 inches was their best guess so that's how this got originally standardized and of course since then it gets updates as well and eventually it's gonna be abandoned or is being abandoned uh, a metric equivalent was created for it and if I do the same trick with the scale and the hook it's gonna be it's gonna be of course 10 pounds so they're hanging together like so and if it stops swinging there you get it it's 9.9 .9 and 10.1 whatever if it moves a little bit so 
there it's by its standpoint so you get it it doesn't want to stop at even numbers it kind of wants to toggle to odd numbers for the decimal digits there 10 pounds so to recap the differences and similarities oh and as a side note why 277 plus a little bit this plus a little bit also comes from this weird definition or this, this different definition that it's not based on a fixed volume but it's based on a fixed weight and because of the because the temperature and barometric pressure does make a difference because the the uh, if you go up in a mountain there's less air pressure there how much air is also pushing down on the scale and on the surface of the container to load the scale does make a difference so long story short uh, that's an infinite decimal number so to recap the differences and similarities between these two gallons are that the US gallon has an approximate weight an infinite decimal number 8.3 something depending on conditions but has a fixed volume and the imperial gallon has a fixed weight 10 pounds that's not negotiable but it has an approximate volume as it expands or contracts slightly with the changes of temperature, changes of elevation or air pressure and changes of location on earth as well in terms of gravitational pull. So that's the brief story between the two kinds of gallons that are still in commercial use and they are rapidly being abandoned favoring metric liter for capacity. However, they are still being used. You can still buy gasoline or milk or whatever commodities measured and sold in gallons. It does matter which one you're getting.